All right, guys, we're here to talk about the 4T40 and the 4T45E transmission and the Pontiac G6s and other GM cars. Uh, symptoms that this vehicle was having were it was stuck in, uh, it was stuck in second gear and it would shift to third, but it wouldn't go into first and it wouldn't do overdrive fourth gear. So the main issue that these vehicles have is they have shift solenoids that go bad. This particular one was shift solenoid A, which controls, like I said, first gear and fourth gear. I went ahead and tore into this one and this is what I found here. To start off this video, I had already changed the fluid and filter and dropped the pan. But if you guys are doing this job, you're going to want to drop the pan and let the fluid drain out because when you take the side casing off, it's all going to come right out everywhere anyway. So definitely take the bottom pan off when you do this, drain all the fluid, get yourself a filter, gasket, all that good stuff, and uh, some new trans fluid. We're going to go ahead and get started on this project. A few things I want to say first. I'm not a transmission guy at all. I usually do not mess with transmissions. So I'm not an expert on that. Here's our G6. It's got the 3.5 liter engine in it. From my understanding, the first things that we're going to do, this actually looks like a fairly straightforward job, kind of a real pain in the ass, but we're going to go ahead and take off the front wheel to set this aside. As you see here, I took the axle nut out. I removed where it mounts to the strut here. Obviously take the, uh, rotor, caliper, all that off. And you have this little ABS sensor here that comes around on a little hanger and you're gonna take that off, set it to the side. Stabilizer link, make sure you disconnect that from the top of the strut. So make sure you hang up this brake caliper, or tie it up somewhere. We're gonna remove this CV axle shaft, which I'm actually waiting on the tool right now to get up in there and pull it out because it's a real pain. From up here, we're gonna take out this battery tray and probably this fuse box. To take this battery box out, you have a, it's a weird size, but it's a nine millimeter. I use the three eight socket to take that bolt out. You have a 12 millimeter, I believe it's 12 here. Then you also have, hang on, a bolt right here. And I believe that is, looks like a three eighths or a 10 mil. So that was a 10 millimeter bolt. Next thing we need to do is you have to be very careful when you come down in here, there's tabs that hold this little computer thing in here. You're gonna have to push these back very carefully. I broke mine, of course. I pushed them too hard and they snapped. There's one here, one here, push that forward. You can slide this right out of there and then you will be able to slide this out of the way. Take this bottom piece off this uh, fuse box. You got four little tabs here that hold it on on each side. You got one, two, one, two on the other side. Pop that off, stick it over here. Uh, you have two seven millimeter bolts. Go ahead and loosen those up. And then you can pop these two harnesses off the bottom of the fuse box. Take the fuse box. You're going to have to also loosen that up. And then once you do that, you can slide the whole fuse box over here so it's out of the way. And this looks like a... This looks like an 8 mil. 7 or an 8 mil. Box out of the way. And that was a 7 millimeter bolt that was holding this red wire in right here. You can see down here we have uh, better access to the transmission. Try and move some of this stuff out of the way. I unhooked the air cleaner, move that. I'm gonna go and unhook any kind of bracket that's in the way. So you got this one here, all the way around. All these bolts are gonna come off, so. Before I did this job, by the way, just a piece of advice, guys. Either power wash your engine bay out or spray it with brake clean to get all the dirt and stuff that could fall into the transmission casing while it's open. Just kind of spray it out, get it all nice and clean in here. So what I'm seeing here with this park reverse neutral switch deal down in here is there are two bolts that really hold it on. I don't know why all this extra stuff is in here, but there's two bolts that hold it on. You have one here. This is the side of the transmission casing. The side that I'm pointing at is where you see the connectors at. And this is the inside towards the engine. You have one bolt here. I don't know what size it is yet. And then you need to push this forward as far as you can. And then you have this boat bolt that will be exposed. Looks like we need to loosen those two bolts up. Two bolts are correct. We need to remove those. They were 13 mil, and then there's a 15 mil right on the very top of this here. Go ahead and try to memorize that this thing was sitting on here like this. It looks like it kind of only goes, goes on one way, I would assume, but it's going to be facing up with this little notch, not facing down the other way. I'll go ahead and pull this off of this shaft. Let's see if this pulls off, which, there we go. Kind of really gently. 
Okay, now that's out of the way. All right, now for the fun part, we have all these casing bolts. All these bolts should be the same size until you get kind of back into that area right there towards the back of the casing. All right, here we are several hours later. I tried absolutely everything and could not get that CV axle out in one piece. So I went ahead and just broke the end of it off. It needed to be replaced anyway. This boot had a tear in it. I used my handy dandy tool I put together here. Use a slide hammer and then I did not have the right attachment so I took a piece that came in my slide hammer kit that bolts into this little square piece here and then welded a pair of vice grips. God, it's still hot. Just welded it. Welded a pair of vice grips to the end of it. Hook the vice grip directly onto here. A couple slides of the slide hammer and it popped right out. So now we have that out of the way. Let's go ahead and take the case off. Go ahead and support your transmission with your jack at the very bottom. Use a board between your jack and the pan, that way you don't damage it. Three 15 millimeter bolts, one, two, three, take those out. And then these two transmission mount bolts right here, 17s. So go ahead and take these 17s out of here and then we can pull this mount off and actually start get to the casing bolts. So once you come down here and remove this transmission casing, this is all the room you get right here. And as you can see, that second solenoid right there, that's the, uh, that's the B solenoid, the A solenoid I already pulled out. You have to reach your hand down in there while using a pick like this, you're gonna be doing this two-handed and you're gonna be shoving your hands in here. You're gonna have your first hand, I had one hand in here holding onto a clip very carefully with my right hand holding onto a clip and with my left hand sneaking this in here right alongside of the shift solenoid, pulling the clip out and holding it on for dear life, hoping I wouldn't drop it. That's gonna be the biggest challenge is putting this thing back in. You're also probably gonna knock, let me try and zoom in a little bit better. You're gonna knock this bar loose right here. Hang on. Okay, you have this bar right here. And the way this works is you have this piece that spins. You're gonna make sure that that's up. Okay, you can see this little piece right here, this bar. You see this little tab is facing up. You're gonna turn this facing down and then slide this back. And this little bottom piece kind of holds the rod in until the, this knob here on this rod pops through that little hole there. And that's how that's supposed to sit in there. We're gonna leave it disconnected until I get the new solenoid in. But we did find the problem, guys. When I disconnected this shift solenoid, the connector broke off. And when I pulled the casing off, this little piece that's supposed to be covering this actually fell out of the bottom. So obviously this solenoid was completely shot. You can see how burned up the windings are. It's completely done for. So inside the transmission, imagine that this solenoid is gonna be sitting in like this. So the transmission's right here. Here's a little fitting. It sits in there just like that. Now, Imagine this is the side that the casing is facing outwards, right? Like you're looking at the driver's side of the car, you know, here's the casing, you're pulling the casing off, and then here's the solenoid sitting in the transmission. We were looking from that top view up here down. So this little clip right here, this clip is going to be sitting in this slot right here, all right? So when you reach your hand down in and you kind of feel around a little bit, you're gonna feel like this metal tab right here and it's kind of wiggling around. You're gonna come in with a pick and pull this apart and then use your other hand. You're gonna reach down, hold onto that metal piece, pull it out and pray to God that you do not drop this in the pan. And then this is just gonna fall right down. That's what I did with mine fell out. So this right here is what the new solenoid is supposed to look like. So 
It says 6059H7236. I took a fishing line and hooked it up to this clip because the fact that there is barely any room down in here to put this clip in, if I drop it down there in the transmission, it'll be easier for me to just pull it right back up. All right, guys, pay real close attention because this is the absolute best piece of advice I'm going to give you for this entire job. The only way that you're going to be able to access the spot where that clip goes and actually be able to see it. So if I lift this up, you can actually see that. You can see where the string is coming up right there, where it goes into the sensor. If I shine my light, you'll be able to see exactly where the clip goes. Hold on. Maybe I'll try and shine it so you can see or use my finger to show you. The clip goes right here, like right there. I got my finger on it right now, right there. Okay, that's where the clip goes. You need to raise this transmission up. That's the secret. You have got to raise the transmission up high enough. And when you do it, make sure that this casing, cause it'll get stuck. It'll wedge itself at the very bottom of this frame when you jack it up. So make sure you pulled it away, then jack it up as high as you can and then you're going to come over here and like i said you're going to have to hold this case open and get down in there now one thing that you need to remember also is that i found out that while you're doing this job you have to keep this is where it makes it difficult even more difficult you have to hold that solenoid in there and use your other hand to put the clip in if you don't, if you don't hold this solenoid in it'll pop itself right out and end up in the bottom of this uh, casing. We're gonna put everything back together now. Make sure you hook this rod back up that I was telling you guys about earlier. Uh, go back into the video. If you haven't seen how to hook that up, I'm not gonna do it again on camera, but you know, it's already in there. All right guys, so this is the code that was showing up before. None of these were showing up. It was just this one right here. P09741 two shift solenoid control circuit high. And we went ahead and replaced that. So now, there are no codes currently, no codes detected. Now that we've solved that problem, we can come back over here, do an active test. Um, the one, two solenoid. So the two, three solenoid, I was able to shift it back and forth. I'll show you, watch, I'll turn it on and off. So right now, I know you can't hear it, but off camera over here, you can hear when I turn shift solenoid one, two on, you can hear it clicking. You couldn't hear that before. It wasn't operating properly at all. The only one that I could hear was this one, the two, three solenoid. When you turn it on, you could hear that one clicking. And then when you go to shift transmission and I can hear the solenoids clicking. See, if so one, two solenoid is on, I could hear the click. You could hear the click again. Hear the click again for two, three solenoids. So all the solenoids are working correctly. That solved the problem. I did already test drive this car and it shifts through the gears as it should. So that was the issue. The one, two shift solenoid. If you guys like this video, please subscribe, like this video. It took a lot of time to make this. And uh, I'm glad that hopefully I'll be able to help somebody else now with this problem.